Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be doing a repair on a voltage regulator for James Condon. You can check out his channel in the description below. He is currently working on a generator that has this voltage regulator. It is the 84132GS, and it's basically used on a lot of different machines, Briggs & Stratton, Generac, and this is specifically for the brush type generators. It is supposed to have another wire coming out, but as you can see, it has a lot of corrosion and damage on it, but we are going to go and repair it. Now, I did go ahead and repair the board off camera. So I wanted to get this back to James as soon as possible. And as you can see, there's quite a bit of damage that had happened, and I've never seen this much damage on this particular board before. I can only imagine that it was either an overload condition or something grounded out against the frame because most of the parts, the only part, let me put it this way, the only parts that were actually still good were this large diode, the capacitor here, which is 100 nanofarads, and then this metal oxide varistor, which only conducts when the voltage goes over a certain threshold and then it will short it out but that is actually still good and i believe what happened was that it was simply an overload or a short circuit now you'll find in the description i have a mauser.com project cart that has all the necessary parts you need to rebuild one of these boards there's not really a lot going on with this particular board and if there's anything missing or it's out of stock let me know and i can try to update it and find equivalents but to service this board, you need a hot air rework station to where you can heat up this black epoxy here. You need to heat it up anywhere from 400 to 425 degrees, and that's just right below the melting point, but it will make it soft enough to where you can actually start to peel it away, and that will allow you to work on this particular board. Here's a picture of the interim progress. I have not seen this much damage to a board like this before. Typically, the main failure points for this regulator are the silicon-controlled rectifier here that's on the heat sink, or it'll be this very large diode here that will fail. And these smaller parts, they're not under as much stress, but they could also burn too. But typically, I find that these are the two main failure points. Now, after the board is repaired, I do use hot glue, although you could use other things, but I've already had to repair some of the traces underneath here, one going to the one of the main spade connectors, and then because of all that damage there, I had to make a jumper wire for the center pin of the silicon-controlled rectifier. And what I'll do is after this is all, I've already tested it, and I'll just put this back in here, I'll put some hot glue around here, and that should be enough to seal it in its tray here that uh, it should be good to go the hot glue does have a lower melting point than normal it's a, it's a thermoplastic and in, i agree it's maybe not the best type of material to use uh, but it also makes it much easier to service later on down the road if you need to uh, these boards go for about uh, 65 75 dollars somewhere around there if you can find them and they're under multiple part numbers but this uh, should be good to go for James, and here are a couple more pictures that I had taken. I actually have the same exact rotor setup that the generator that he's working on has, and it was a good way to test the functionality of it. Here in the first picture, you're going to see that the rotor will draw about 2 amps when you input on these spade connectors here. 120 volts AC, which is right around the voltage that the exciter winding would output to this regulator and then now the brush assembly is putting out 36 volts dc but that's with no load as you add load to the generator then the amperage is going to increase on the rotor i believe the at full load the rotor is going to draw about i want to say six amps or seven amps i don't think it's a lot i haven't see, i haven't been able to measure that but no load if you're testing it you will be able to see about a two amp draw now there's always a test that's done to make sure that your voltage regulator is working properly and that is to take the two connectors here the, there's a three pin snubber connector they call it there's a, it's a three pin white molex connector if you take the first and third the two outermost pins there and you take a jumper and you short them 
what will happen is, and what should happen, is that this regulator should shut down. You should see zero draw current on the rotor, and you should see no output on voltage to your outlets. You should see at most maybe five or six volts AC. That's residual magnetism in the generator. And that's what I would expect to happen. And that's what the external system control board does to regulate the voltage. It's controlling the resistance between those two pins in order to regulate the voltage. So the, the brains of that circuit is actually not on this board, is on the other board. Okay guys, I'm gonna end the video here. I know there really wasn't too much to show for this particular repair, but I'm gonna get this back out over to James so that he can finish up his generator repair. I think you should be all set with this. And if there's any questions specific to the repair, or rebuilding of this board, please feel free to leave a comment and feel free to reach out as well. I do have an LLC in my home state that I do repair these boards for a fee. I try to keep it around half the cost of a new one to where it's to, so it makes sense. Uh, typical repair for me for something like this is going to take anywhere from an hour and a half to two hours, you know, between melting the epoxy resin and carefully removing the components so I don't do any damage to the board but obviously i had to do a lot more repair than i was expecting for this board but thankfully it works it's not the prettiest but it works so thanks again for watching and supporting my channel and thank you to james as always for thinking of me and till the next time thanks guys